Um, so please enjoy this talk and um, give a warm round of applause for David Spiola. Thanks a lot. So uh, I'm going to talk today a little bit about AI and what we uh, think we can do with it. Uh, I live and work in Vienna, Austria, as we already know now, in a living project that's not so far away from an open source project. So we basically a bunch of people who try to get something up and running. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm responsible for innovation, uh, product innovation and service innovation. So basically, I was the one who said back in the days we have to use uh, we have to use Neos, and uh, I was also the one who said uh, we have to check out AI and what we can do with that. Yeah, just to be straight, uh, this talk is not going to be about code. So if you expect any code you have to go to the other room. I probably think there will be lots of code over there. Uh, this talk is about our journey and findings and things we already figured out and things we probably still have to figure out. And uh, it's a very, very broad topic. I mean, uh, I think this is, we all have to deal with that today or in the near future. And today I'm gonna focus on chatbots and a little bit also about smart assistants. So um, I, I actually, I have to question myself because um, in the first place for the last, let's say 15 to 20 years, I really had a very bad impression about this topic in my head. And in the last year, clients came and said, hey, um, we would like to have a, a chatbot. And I, my, first, my first thought was, it's not good, you don't need it, it doesn't work out, let it go. So I had to question myself, why did I have this bad impression about it? And um, I think I found the reason, because this guy, <laughs> <laughs> he was always the first picture I had in my head for the last 15 years when somebody came up with so something like that. And um, since then, a lot of things have changed, and that's why I started picking up this topic again and said to myself, I have to talk about it. His name was, by the way, Clippy. Who knew that? Who is, who is old enough to know him? Oh, okay, very good. <laughs> so, yeah, why did Clippy didn't work out? Um, number one reason was he was rule-based. So they tried back in the day to solve, uh, to figure out the intent the user actually meant or what he's doing uh, by a simple set of uh, rules. And if it comes to that, you, you will figure out quite quickly that it doesn't work out that well. So you, so you need something else. Um, and it's always about uh, to figure out what the user is doing or uh, the user is meaning. And there are a few reasons why I changed my mind on this topic, uh, uh, but the number one reason is that when it comes to such applications, you always need good content. And when it comes to content, uh, Neos is a perfect match to do that. So from my point of view, if you want to do something like that in that field, you have a very, very good framework and CMS available to do such things. But before we go into that, I'd like to give you a very brief overview what AI actually is. Uh, first of all, it's not new at all. I mean, the topic is quite hip right now and it will be getting bigger and bigger every year, but it's actually not really new. Second, it's not voodoo magic, it's just basic mathematics. And third, it's not almighty at least yet. So we will see what the near future will bring, but you can, basic, you can just do basic things with it. And I am definitely don't know everything about it, but I'm pretty sure Jack Norris do, so uh, if you need a full overview of that topic, ask, ask him, send him a message. Okay, so what is it? It is a field of computer science 
that uses statistical techniques to give computer systems the ability to learn with data without being explicitly programmed. And this is the, this is the great difference to a rule-based system. So the system figures out by himself or finds strategies uh, to solve certain tasks. A very good quote I found about this is, um, if, a if, a, if a person can do a mental task within less than one second of thought, we can probably automate it using AI now or in the near future. So if you can think about it one second, like if you're, is, is the guy you're talking to male or female, it's quite simple. So you could probably automate that. Um, there are lots of techniques available and there are new techniques coming probably every day right now. Um, but I'd like to give you three uh, to think about. The first technique you can use is classification, what basically means uh, to divide input into some categories. Uh, a use case could be to determine if something is spam or no spam, very easy, or if you're male or female. A second technique is uh, regression, where um, this is quite small here, uh, the term relationship relationship among variables and this is quite often used uh, when you do risk management or price prediction for instance so you have a set of variables and a certain combination at a certain moment is a very good match to something the third one and the one we're gonna need for our chatbot application is a neural network and uh, it's unsupervised so basically you can you can have supervised uh, applications and unsupervised application and uh, it the with an, a neural network is needed to do NLP, and NLP means natural language processing. Uh, it's not neurolinguistic programming. This is something else. So this talk is not about neurolinguistic programming. All right. So uh, we need a network that helps us to understand what the user actually is trying to say or we try to figure out what he's actually meaning. So how does that work? You basically train a model. So you need, you need a lot of data to do that. Uh, but when you have the data, you can train a network uh, to do just that thing for you. And it has always an input layer and then more uh, at least one or multiple out, uh, hidden layers and one output layer. And what you do is you train your network or your model over and over again, and with every iteration, uh, the predictions are getting better and better, hopefully. So uh, we need a model to do that for us. And we need an NLP model to figure out in our application what the user actually said and meant. Like, I'd like to see a red t-shirt or do you know what a pizza is or whatsoever? So we need to figure that out. And for that, we can't work with a rule-based set. We have to use a model for that. And very fortunately, there are models available, but we will come to that a little bit later. So how did it evolve? Um, it actually started in Germany, uh, 1956. Uh, um, in this was, uh, there was a conference in Hanover uh, where the, 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 uh, the name artificial intelligence came up for the first time. Uh, machine learning started in the 80s and the real breakthrough was around 2010 uh, with uh, deep learning. And why was this breakthrough? There are three reasons for that. First, uh, large data sets. If you want to train a model, you need a lot of data. Uh, and if you take a look at services like Go uh, that Google provide or other companies, or even some not so famous ones right now in the news, um, you, can, you can do a lot with the data, but you need the data to train a model. So it doesn't make sense if you have, you have 100 records and you want to do something with that, you need at least 10 or 100,000 to do that. Uh, a second thing is that in the last years, new algorithms evolved, uh, new techniques uh, were implemented, and this was also a great benefit, but last but not least, uh, more resources. So to, do, to, to, to train a model, uh, you, you could do that probably on your laptop, 
but if you want to do this seriously, you need lots of CPU power. And uh, you can do that today with the cloud. You couldn't do that in the 80s. So you, if you, th the basic thing is that first you have to train it. One it's once it's, it's trained, you can use it for your application. They even uh, building now own chips just to, to do uh, AI calculations, actually. OK, so what does this has to do with us? I mean, this is cool shit, but what, 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 what is the impact for us as agencies? Uh, we have to rethink how we create websites um, because content is basically data. And you need data uh, to uh, train models and uh, to, to use them f to do AI-based applications. Um, you need to retrain your models with your data. So you need structured data to do that. To do that. And uh, what really has also changed is uh, that we have to consider is uh, how we communicate. So um, to le at least for me, or how I saw it, the most important information on a website used to be the phone number. Uh, people basically looked up the phone number and wanted to, to, to talk to somebody on the phone, you know. But these days, with these new messaging techniques, you know, with all this messaging stuff going on, I don't know how you guys see it, but sometimes I call friends and they text me back. They don't they don't want to talk to me anymore. It's like quite hard to get them on the to get the, to get them on the phones. So we we have to adapt to that fact. So it's not only just about uh presenting some information or a phone number. Uh we have to find we have to structure it differently to serve other uh, other lanes as I call them as well. Second, uh, an overwhelming amount of high-quality content forces us to use new strategies for how we select content. Too long to read. I see this everywhere in the last year or so, that you don't, you, there is so much good content available, you as a person, has, you have to define your own strategies to select or find the right content, and if you're interested, that you can dive in. And uh, people have to decide quickly. So you have to provide the information on new channels as well. And two of those lanes or channels are a chatbot or a smart assistant. So the, the basics below are the same. It's just a different way of transporting the information. And the race is really on. So this is. This is a selection of uh, chatbots from Austria. So uh, every bigger company, uh, they are implementing uh, chatbots right now. And the same is for uh, smart assistants. So there are these three players, uh, Apple Siri, uh, Google Assistant, and Alexa, of course. And just in the last year, the, the market for smart assistants grew eight times. How many people of you have an uh, Alexa at home or a smart assistant? Do you use it on a daily basis? So this is the future. People will do that uh, more often uh, every year. Uh, and you have, you have to ask you a very basic question, probably in the morning when you have to look something up, like the weather, that do you still Google or do you use a smart assistant? Some things are. I mean, if I want to know what the temperature is outside, why should I open my laptop or get my phone if I can say, hey, Alexa, or hey, Google, uh, what's the temperature outside? What's the weather? And how we deliver, or how we as a company delivered information uh, until now was basically this. On the left-hand side, uh, we have a domain, some content, uh, uh, that we uh, created or provided for our customers. And we serve that information through the browser, through a screen of any size uh, to a user. And this was basically single lane, uh, a street. 
but with these new techniques, uh, it's basically a freeway. So we cannot only use uh, a browser to communicate, we can also use a chat interface or use vo voice and audio to transfer information to the user. And this also means that we have to rethink how that this is this looks and how it's shaped and what node types we have and how they work and how we can uh, use them to serve all three lanes. But all three lanes have one thing in common. They all need your domain. So um, it's basically uh, you can have the best chatbot application available. You can have the best smart assistant in the world. If you don't have the content the user desires, it's, it's worthless. So it's basically about getting this information to the channels. Okay, now I will focus on the chatbot and talk a little bit about how we set up chatbots. Uh, first, we need an NLP network. And very it's very fortunate there is already one available. So you can use Dialogflow uh, to do NLP processing. Uh, you can define intents and entities and things like that. You can retrain the model uh, because if you would have to start from scratch, you wouldn't be able to do it. It's just uh, too complex and too much data. Below that, uh, we decided to uh, focus on Botman. Uh, Botman is a PHP-based uh, chatbot framework that helps us to do basic decision-making uh, and uh, helps us to manage the conversation with the user. And the third thing is, of course, Neos, uh, where we have to carefully think about our content strategy and sem semantic structures. And what does it actually do? So the first layer tries to figure out what did the person actually say. Then we use Botman to manage the dialogue within it. And then we deliver the content straight from Neos. You probably could do all of this just in dialogue flow. But if you do that, the problem is that it's a, it's a entire ecosystem. So you have no connection between uh, your domain, where your content is, your website, uh, and the and the chatbot, and it's also limited. So if you want to do a little bit more complex stuff like uh, confirm messages with yes and no, it's it works, but uh, you can do a better job with chatbot in that regard. Okay, so we have a domain. Uh, a domain has different node types uh, and different content elements that are having some purpose on your website uh, uh, for an article, you have a tip or a checklist or a quiz, a table or something. And we ask ourselves, hmm, we, we, we would like to categorize uh, these content elements in three different types. Uh, and these types are uh, trigger content, dialogue content, and deep content. So you might have a interview or a FHQ question somewhere structure the node type available that you can use to ask uh, simple questions or a product. Um, what and you can use this product information to create to create new dialogues. It's like a starting point. Uh, when I checked out some chatbot applications, it's not always that obvious where to start. So you always have to find a start point, and you can use you you can start a conversation. Uh, at first before the user starts his first input. And then when you're in a conversation, there are some elements that fit perfectly to do that, uh, like a tip, it's not that long, uh, let's say 100 characters, uh, or you have a quiz application on your website uh, where you can go uh, through all the questions. You might have a teaser for a product, you know, you would like to bring up, you can do that. Uh, or you have a statement you want to serve. But when the user likes your content and he decided that this is very valuable content for him, for the user, he can always go to the website and 
get the deep content. So the deep content is actually what we write, what we have right now, and we we structure those content elements in these two categories to be able to uh, to deliver content through these new lanes we have. Uh, a very interesting type, from my point of view, is also a lexicon. It's very basic. It helps a lot. If you described, uh, if, you, uh, if you have a lexicon of the most important words on your website, and you can use that and feed this directly to the NLP network. So when it comes to the content strategy, you should always have conversations in mind. So uh, try to create your strategy in a way uh, that you are able to serve your content through a multi-step uh, um, conversation. It doesn't matter if it's the smart assistant uh, or the chatbot. Uh, also one thing that I really like is natural language navigation. So you probably have a structured navigation on your website and you might have a search navigation with Elasticsearch, but if you add natural language uh, navigation to that, so people could really ask for something, or you could also guide him somewhere, like say, hey, uh, what what t-shirts do you like? And uh, the bot is answering, um, I have t-shirts, what is your favorite color? And then you can, you can uh, bring him uh, faster to the content he's looking for. And you have to always keep in mind to have to to that you have to serve all of those three lanes. Next, semantic structure, very important uh, to use your data later to uh, send it to the NLP network. Categorize your node types and consider additional metadata to support lanes. So uh, this is what we did with dialogue content. Uh, Trigger content, dialogue content, and deep content. There might be better, way to do better ways to do this. This is how we do it today. Uh, also, I think it's very important that you have to keep in mind that you first serve the machine and then the human. So there might be another machine in between you and the human. That's the chatbot uh, or the smart assistant. And he has, he has to understand your domain and has to be able to access it. If he can't, it's worthless. And also very important is that when you shape your node types, uh, that you don't use structures like infobox. I mean, an infobox could basically be anything. So you could say, well, this is a tip, and this is a statement, and this is a teaser, and then you can uh, get those information much better uh, later on. So how does such a uh, round trip looks like? So we have the content uh, in our Neo CMS. And it's very fortunate that uh, Neos has a very strong API and we can export uh, the desired content elements and feed them directly to the NLP network. Otherwise, you would have to uh, enter manually all the information for the NLP network. So the NLP network can only analyze information you feed. It has a basic understanding of things and you can even add uh, modules like Smalltalk and things, but when it comes to your domain, it's important that you feed all your node types or the necessary node types to the NLP network uh, for better intent matching. Okay, once we have figured out the intent, uh, we get this, we, we will start with the Botman framework. And the Botman framework uh, helps us uh, once we have the intent, we can decide how we would like to proceed. Uh, and this could be, we have to start a new conversation. We pick up a conversation. A conversation could be something that you have over multiple days or hours. Uh, you could end uh, a conversation, start a new one. So you basically get a session with a history, what did you already serve to the user, and uh, can you can make basic decision making. And once you've figured out what you would like to serve next, 
again, you use uh, the NEOS API uh, to, uh, to get the desired information from NEOS and you feed it back uh, uh, to the user, regardless if it's a chatbot application uh, or it's a smart assistant. And this could be a simple tip or something else, something he needs every day in the morning, one li this one little information that makes him smile every day. If you, if you can deliver that, you did the job. And there is one rule that still applies and probably even more, that is content is king. And you have these cool new techniques uh, to, to do really, really, really good uh, chatbot applications, but you always need good content. This is what the user wants. And you have to keep in mind now that you just don't do it for one lane, the browser, uh, that you have to do it for other lanes as well. So, uh, what do I get? What what can I what can I what can I achieve uh, with those techniques? I collected a few topics. First, I really like the idea of natural language navigation. If that if if to have if you have that worked out quite well, I think it's a great benefit. Um, you can provide a better customer journey because uh, you can pick him pick him up uh, where he is. Um, you get a history and a context of the conversation, so you can learn from that and can make even better decisions over time. Usually you don't need installation because you already have the chat client or the smart assistant at home. You only have to use uh, the skill uh, or the implementation for that chat client like Slack or Facebook Messenger or Skype or there are for Botman, for instance, there are several implementations for very uh, frequently used uh, messaging services. Uh, it also is also about assisting the user. It's like going into a store and somebody comes to you and says, hello, can I help you? Uh, what you're looking for? And you say, ah, I, I, need, I need new shoes. Uh, uh, I like new red shoes. Can you show me where to, to find them? And it's not like shoes red over there. You know, it's like uh, <laughs> natural language. Uh, and you could build up a relationship uh, where the user is probably at certain point we will s we see that with Alexa or smart assistants uh, on a daily basis in the morning when you uh, when 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 they are feeding the latest news or the weather forecast or things like that. But the most important thing for me is that you have to be where your users are, and this refers back to the slide where I said something has changed and it has definitely has changed the, the way we communicate. So I don't know how about you, but I do more texting every day uh, than calling people. And uh, this, is, this is where the users are right now in those channels where they communicate and you have to be there with your content. And you can do this 24 seven, also very important in our industry. So, uh, to bring it, uh, to sum it up, uh, from my point of view, a chatbot and a smart assistant is only as good as the content you have and the frameworks you use. And this was actually this the, the thing that changed that picture in my head about Clippy. So I visually uh, exchanged that with the NEOS logo because with NEOS, uh, this is for me the the tool of choice to do such things because you have a great content repository, you can work with multiple dimensions, you have a solid API, you have a framework, it's very user friendly. And if it comes to other projects uh, that where you don't use the data to feed it somewhere else, you could also do other AI projects if you have a lot of data available, you can build your own models. You have all the tools you need to do that. All right, that's it. This was my talk about chatbots and smart assistants and a sneak peek about things that will come to us in the near future or even today. And I hope you liked it. Thanks very much, David. Are there any Questions, we have some time for questions. Bastian.
I'd like to know, uh, even though you said you didn't or weren't going to show code, I don't want to see code. I just would like to know, is this an existing customer project which you're currently doing or is it research what you have done and this is the state of your research? It, it is an ongoing project uh, and we already have the, the content strategy uh, and uh, the implementation is done and the step we are in right now is to connect that to the NLP network. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There's another question. You say you uh, you train in how how do you train in the bot with uh, the contents? Mm -hmm. Bef uh, in the content repositories, m uh, for example, in the CMS, we have not so many contents for the training. And I, yeah, well, this is actually. I mean, if you would have to start your own model from scratch, you wouldn't you wouldn't probably achieve anything. But you have structured information on your website. Let's say you have about 100 websites, you have a, a lexicon, you have FHQ, you might have interviews or polls or quiz content elements. And what you basically do is you don't start from scratch. You take what you have and retrain the, 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 the model uh, to, uh, to be able to uh, predict better uh, results based on your new content. So. I'd say that it should be a mid-sized website to do it. I wouldn't do it with a small website because uh, one one application I have in mind is if you have rep, uh, recipes, for instance, you know. And uh, I think that a structural navigation, you know, like a menu with categories and I don't know, it's it's way too heavy. If you give the user the possibility to say, I'd like to know how to how to make how do I make pizza dough for instance you know you can do that in a very natural way and um, or things like that thank you very much any other questions all right thanks very much David